Greetings, concerned viewers, and welcome to part one of our four-part series, "Climate Solution: A Revealing Documentary" by United in Heart. United in Heart is a nonprofit organization co-founded in 2018 by Mr. Arvin Paranjpe and his wife, Mrs. Nandhini Paranjpe. The group's mission is to use scientific studies conducted by renowned climate scientists to quickly enhance global awareness about the urgency of climate change and to share the quickest, most efficient ways to address the issue. In February 2021, United in Heart released an informative documentary entitled "United in Heart: Hunger and Climate Solutions." On today's program, we'll explore the first part of this important film. Now to a dire warning about climate change. According to a new report, experts say that we have until 2030 to avoid catastrophe. It also says if unprecedented changes are not made and made soon, there will be irreversible damage to the planet. The report focuses on what could happen if global temperatures rise by more than 1.5 degrees Celsius or 2.7 degrees Fahrenheit. It would likely mean more erratic weather, dangerous heat waves, rising sea levels, and dying coral reefs. I think scientists are beginning to flap their arms and, and get excited. And the, and but what we also have to, we have to do is look at the whole problem because I think the negotiators now. Realize there is a problem, but what they don't seem to realize is that they're not proposing solutions that will effectively deal with it. And、um, as scientists, when we look at this big picture, we can see that. As Dr. Hansen implies, climate change is both an environmental problem and an education problem. My name is Arvin Paranjpe, and for 10 years I helped guide the utilization of key university scientific discoveries. I'm here to tell you that a practical solution to stop climate change was discovered. I'll explain the climate solution in a minute. First, let's pinpoint the education gap. So let me just give you a little background on the problem. Perm- what is permafrost? Permafrost. Uh, is ground that's been frozen for a long time. The name impl- suggests、uh, permanently frozen.、Uh, if only it were. 24 percent of the northern hemisphere land area is permafrost. We think that in that permafrost there is about 1,500 gigatons、uh, of carbon, and and for context, that's about twice. Uh, what's in the atmosphere now? So it's a truly enormous amount of carbon, and what's happening is as the Arctic warms, and I think you all know the Arctic is warming at least twice as fast、uh, as the rest of the planet. This previously frozen matter is starting to decay, and as it starts to decay and decompose, it emits greenhouse gases, CO2, and methane into the atmosphere. What this is, it's what we call a climate feedback. It's a self-reinforcing loop whereby warming induces more greenhouse gas emissions. It's absolutely essential <laughs> that this this feedback loop uh, not uh, get going strongly. If it does,、uh, it, there's there's simply no way to control it. Most people are unaware that global warming may ignite the ice carbon bomb. 1,500 gigatons of carbon is frozen in Arctic land masses. There's even more in the ocean. This is why plus 1.5 degrees Celsius keeps climate scientists up at night. And the more carbon dioxide emissions, the warmer it will get. In 2009, climate scientists published in Nature that the safe zone of carbon dioxide is at or below 350 parts per million in the atmosphere. We soared past the safe zone of 350 parts per million in 1988. We're now at 410 parts per million. Dr. James Hansen is probably the most respected climate scientist. He published that there's an approximate 40-year climate lag between carbon concentration and global warming. So, adding 40 years to 1988 brings us to about 2030. 2030. 
is a year the IPCC projected we'd see plus 1.5 degrees Celsius. Most people are concerned that plus 1.5 degrees Celsius would increase severe weather events and food and water shortages. But what is sadly overlooked is that we will probably set off the ice carbon bomb at plus 1.5 degrees Celsius. Even plus 1 degree centigrade is dangerous, and climate scientists now agree we're already at plus 1. NASA released a time-lapse animation of the disappearing Arctic polar ice cap. In the animation, the whiter the ice, the older and thicker it is. Thick ice sheets prevailed in the 1980s, as indicated by bright white. Here is the polar ice cap 10 years later. Fast forward 20 years, and the Arctic is now dominated by younger, thinner ice. If the ice carbon bomb rapidly releases as methane, a powerful greenhouse gas, then we could see temperatures rise quickly. And Arctic methane emissions are not in the IPCC projections. Here is a heat map showing Arctic methane emissions. In October 2002, Arctic Ocean ice methane emissions were low, as denoted by yellow and orange. By October 2012, 100,000 square miles of ocean began releasing methane, as denoted by red. Accordingly, world-renowned ecologist Dr. Bill Ripple published the World Scientist's Warning of a Climate Emergency. The article stated, we declare, with more than 11,000 scientist signatories from around the world, clearly and unequivocally, that planet Earth is facing a climate emergency. That was pretty shocking. So let's break things down. One, there's too much carbon in the atmosphere. It's enough to push us over 1.5 degrees Celsius. And two, renewable energy reduces the amount of carbon we add to the atmosphere. It does not remove carbon from the atmosphere. Fortunately, a practical solution to remove atmospheric carbon was discovered. But here's the thing. It involves diet change, a major undertaking for most people. All I ask is that you keep an open mind as to how food choice matters and how we can work together to solve climate change. The IPCC explained that there was about 589 gigatons of carbon stored in the atmosphere in the year 1750. From 1750 to 2015, we added 240 gigatons of carbon. The orange bars here represent the carbon we added since 1750. So how do we remove enough carbon out of the atmosphere? The answer is better land use. It's subtle but makes a world of difference. An IPCC report indicates that 35% of the usable land area of the planet is used to just graze animals. On average, we feed our animals 40 pounds of food for one pound of meat. And the animals consume almost 50% of the grain on Earth. So if the world goes vegan, food is plentiful and land is plentiful. Remember how 35% of the usable land area on Earth is used to graze animals? Well, if the world goes vegan, that's all extra land. If you take 41% of this extra land and restored the original forests on it, it would sequester 265 gigatons of carbon out of the atmosphere. That is more than the 240 gigatons of carbon that we added to the atmosphere from 1750 to 2015. We can literally reverse climate change. CO2 levels would return to the safe zone. If you want to know how fast the forests will come back, here is an example in 2002. In 2006, it looked like this. All we had to do is take the livestock out and the forest came back. It took four years. The climate solution was presented to the European Parliament. 
by Dr. Silesh Rao. Here's another example, a coffee plantation that became a forest within 20 years. The science is clear. I suggest we set brave goals on food, communication by sharing this documentary with others, and carbon, which includes both carbon emission reductions and donations to plant food forests. The organization Sadna Forest plants trees to help people establish food security on their own land. Or in other words, we can fundamentally shift how we address world hunger by creating food abundance where it's needed most. You give the people trees to plant around their homes, they establish a food forest to live really well, really a healthy life and surplus to sell to others. We teamed up with Sodna Forest because their tree survival rates are the best in class in severely degraded land, where food forests improve livelihoods and uplift families. After five to seven years, when this food forest will be mature, you will have food security for your family for generations. Now it's time for us to scale up our activities. We would love to have a mobile reforestation unit to go and visit village by village and reforest them, give a public training to all the people and give them the trees from the truck and plant them with them, build the tree guards and move on. And we think we could start a huge tree planting movement. And that's our dream, that's our vision. And we are really together in this for the long ride. Thank you, United in Heart, for sharing such important information at the most critical time in our planet's existence. We hope more world leaders and citizens will heed this urgent call to heal our already burdened atmosphere and eradicate the climate crisis by choosing the only certain and viable solution, the vegan lifestyle. For more information on United in Heart, please visit unitedinheart.org. Precious viewers, Thank you for your company today for part one of United in Heart documentary, United in Heart, Hunger and Climate Solutions, 